It is time for the Hold the Rope Show, presented by Jerry Lane Chevrolet, Find New Roads, and Sammy's Grill on Highland, starring Skip Bertman and Dan Canaveri. The latest on the business of sports, LSU sports, LSU baseball, and national sports topics. Here now is the host of the Hold the Rope Show, Tommy Chrysan. Hello and welcome to Hold the Rope with Skip and Cattle. I'm your host, Tommy Chrysan. It's a Tuesday night. We got another educational, entertaining, and fun show for you. Lots of stories, some great guests we'll tell you about in a minute. Coach Skip Bourbon, how are you this evening? I'm doing good, Tommy. Uh, tell us about who is the guest. Well, we're going to have mm-hmm. Ryan Terrio, College World Series champion with you at LSU, and two-time Major League Baseball yeah, he's got World some Series champion. He's got some rings. And Virgil is very... Uh, Guy that I hired from the TAF, uh, seemed like 50 years ago. Yeah, Virg will be uh, here with some really good stuff. And he's got an amazing amount of information. So those are two good ones. Last week, uh, we had some good ones with uh, Eric Dooley. Yep. Um, I think the coach of Southern's really uh, a good coach and a, certainly a nice gentleman. And uh, we really enjoyed that. And then we had Jeremy Moore. Who had some good information? Another one of baseball players that makes me proud. <laughs> he told some good stuff, Coach Jackson, Mississippi. You visited some big LSU fans up there last week. Uh, uh yeah, uh, Dan Canavary, uh Tiger Athletic Foundation had a meeting up there with the group in Jackson. And then he did some other people who were uh, really super boosters in Jackson. And we did a couple of things, so we were able to sell a lot of books, have a real good time in Jackson, Mississippi. Dan Canterbury, how are you tonight, sir? I'm doing good. Hey, we had a high line in Jackson, though. When we were there, not only were the Jackson people there, we had a lot of people. It was a great event. Uh, as I said to Skip, it looked much like a Bengal Bells event. A lot of commerce going on, a lot of people, a lot of excitement. But we got to see Eric Berthelot, former pitcher, at LSU <laughs> national champion, and Jim Schwanke showed up. Yeah, right there. He's up it there. It was snowing. a nice, nice evening, and our host, you know, from Jackson, from the TAF, you know, real good man, John uh, Andrew Griffin. Uh, did you know, a great like job. Uh, made John Griffin and maybe some others did a real good job of uh, setting it up for particular me, and I really appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. And thanks, John. I want to say one thing, Ryan Terrio, the only person to score the winning run to win the College World Series and the Real World Series. The big yeah, World Series. that'd be. Well, no, no, no. Actually, well, I'm sorry to jump in like That's that. That's okay. Thanks. But uh, it's not Ryan, the la- it's not the first or the last time you've ever corrected me. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Terrio does has done something that no other human being has ever done. He did win the College World Series, and then, yes, he did win the National League World Series with the Chicago Cubs, but that just put him in there with other people. But nobody's ever won the real World Series with two different teams and won the College World Series. So he's a -a one-of-a-kind with 7 billion people. He's one of a kind. <laughs> anyway, let's go, Tom. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. Hey, don't forget to tell everybody about the show. Uh, tell them to subscribe to YouTube. You can watch it anytime between now and next week's show. And Coach Canterbury has lined up some great guests this month. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, Ryan Terrio, the guy we were talking about, the riot, as they called him in Chicago at Wrigley Field, he'll join us and we'll begin with dugout talking baseball, which – is sponsored by Hudco Roofing. He's got his hat and his shirt on. Of course, he's part of Hudco Roofing. All of that and more. Appreciate you guys uh, saying hello, Joe and Carl on face on YouTube. Appreciate that. Also, Facebook, Hold the Rope Show. We're back with more right after this pause. You're watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Thank you, Baton Rouge, for 35 years of helping Jerry Lane support the community. With all the things that you do to help us with buying vehicles, servicing vehicles, it allows us to support over 60 different charities and companies that bring Baton Rouge to a new level. And we appreciate your support in helping us do this. Thank Thank you, Baton Rouge. A 
burger so big it's got its own gravitational pull to keep you coming back. Oh, and tasting freaking awesome could have something to do with it, too. Sammy's better than ever. Do the words investing, 401k, mutual funds, IRA, and annuities have you worried or confused? The team at Altus Wealth of Mickey Gidry, Ronnie Brown, Jesse Daigle, Brad Ewing, Wally McMakin, Jeremy Perkey, John Reeder, John Stewart, Clay Moffitt, and Dixon McMakin are ready to help with all your financial and estate planning needs. Find them at www.altuswealthmgt.com or call 201-9300. That's 201-9300. Fat Tuesday's Casino, located in the Plaquemine Truck Stop on Highway 1 in Plaquemine, Louisiana. Come out to Fat Tuesday's Casino, where every day is a carnival. If you're ready to win some money, please visit Fat Tuesday's Casino in the Plaquemine Truck Stop, Plaquemine, Louisiana. Since opening our first Benny's Car Wash location in 1951, we continue to employ the latest in automated car wash technology, from the use of electronic sensor technology to the chemistry and engineering of cleaning agents. Over the years, our car care services have expanded to include detailing, oil changes, state inspections, along with Be Quick convenience stores and fueling stations. After seven decades of successful operations, we are proud to have nine locations serving the Baton Rouge area. For more information, go to Benny'sCarWash.com. Have you been issued a ticket for texting, speeding, or other traffic violations? Have you made a mistake? We all have. You're not a bad person. Call the law offices of O.C. Brown at 225-343-1111 or connect with us online at OCBrown.com. We continue with Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano here on a Tuesday night. I appreciate you folks jumping in on YouTube and Facebook. Dan Canterbury, Skip Bourbon, and now we welcome to the show our guest, Ryan Terrio. I don't know what kind of introduction he needs. Uh, that was it. Yeah, here is Ryan Terrio. <laughs> yeah. well, well, uh, hey, hold I on. Newly inducted he... Broadmoor High School Hall of Fame. <laughs> Broad, don't forget that. A... <laughs> Broadmoor High School. Go Bucks. Well, remember that Mike Woods in there? Not yet. Okay, you beat him in. <laughs> Who was in that game when you played Broadmoor? Uh, of course, who was the pitcher? For well, you? Chad Durbin was pitching for Chad Woodlawn. Chad Durbin was pitching. Yep. What a great, you know. Oh, yeah. Of, course he of big was, leaguer. Yeah. yeah, he went into pro ball. Like he, he wasn't in, he didn't play in college. But Terrio was a shortstop and, of course, third base. Trey Duncan. Was uh, who? Trey Duncan. Yeah, it was Trey and then the Mike Woods, Duncan, yeah. And mm-hmm. then Mike was in left field. Mike played second, I believe, that or game. Second. First round draft pick from Southern. From Southern. Mm-hmm. And was there another player from Southern in there? Um, in the outfield. No, I don't believe no. so. There was an Ole Miss pitcher, Michael Posey, and then a oh. ULL pitcher, uh, Brant Ray, on that Broadmoor team. Well, anyway, that was our catcher was a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Why not? Why not? Broadmoor baby. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> the, the the thing about it is that's amazing is there's a lot of talent there. Mm-hmm. And at that time, I still think people didn't realize how much talent there was in Louisiana, particularly in baseball, like we've already established football and basketball. But baseball, too, there's a tremendous amount. Uh, but let me talk about Ryan for a second here. He wasn't drafted out of high school. Uh, he was, he was uh, by professional baseball standards, he was relatively small mm-hmm. by professional baseball standards. And then to play shortstop as well as he did um, without being a, a Latin, mm-hmm. which everybody else seemed to have a Latin guy playing short. 
And then he played for us, as everybody knows, for three years. And and then he was drafted in the third round, right? Yeah. Okay, and then he worked. They tried to make him a switch hitter, and it was a bad idea. He's a, he's a good hitter. He can hit. And he played, I'd say he did his best playing with the Cubs, with Terrio, um, with uh, Fontenot mm -hmm. at second base, mm -hmm. right? Yep. That was an amazing thing. Then when I went up to see in the first game, who was catching? Spider. Yeah, Ryan Jorgensen. Ryan Jorgensen yeah. was catching for Cincinnati. Sure was. So I got to see three guys. You know, I have a, Paul Maneri took a picture where uh, you were hitting, and uh, Fontenot was on deck, and of course Terry, if, if uh, the catcher, of course was Jorgensen was on deck. Jorgensen was in the, in the photo, yeah. so that was that was very nice. Uh, but anyway, uh, he did that, and he became a big leaguer of uh, quite uh, some renown. He could have played a lot longer and elected to be more with his family, like many players do. But he was still, he could have played for six more years, probably. But he went, and he, of course, he's a good businessman. He does well with his family. Anyway, I wanted to let everybody know he's not just a – a former player, I mean, this guy's is about as good as it gets from any college in America. So we're very proud of uh, Rhino. Rhino, uh, tell us about what you're doing. Yep. Besides, now that you're not playing baseball, yep. what is it that you do with one of our sponsors? Sure. Here? So um, Hudco Roofing, we are proud sponsors of uh, of this show, Hudco Roofing and Exteriors, um, company we started, uh, you know, four years ago. Um, you know, I guess it was, it was maybe about a year and a half before COVID. I just got a little bored, truthfully. And I've always had a passion for construction. And, and, um, you know, while I was playing, I invested with a few guys here locally and we probably built, you know, 15 or 20 houses up and down Highland road. And I, I got that itch and learned that business and, and I always knew it was going to be something that, that I would eventually um, get into. So, you know, I got licensed commercial, residential, general contractors license and, and um and started pushing and growing you know roofing was a an industry that that there was there was a lot of of need there and so so that's kind of where we started but it's grown coach i mean um you know we do everything we also have another company tnt building consultants um which is kind of a a, a spin-off which is is all things construction and then um pure restoration which is a, a restoration company that's recently been started you know kind of all under the same umbrella um with the the construction mindset but but hitting different areas. And, um, you know, it's great because there's not a cap, you know, there, there's, no not cap. A, there's not a, there's not a time where your career's over in that yeah. industry. And that's wonderful. Yeah. And you can keep growing and, and the more people like you guys that, that can talk about the business and the better, the better it does. And, uh, your kids are, uh, you got high schoolers mm -hmm. and your son, people don't realize, but your boy, uh, geez, who sang, take me out to the ball game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the yep. Cubs uh, locker room that went on the, it was a YouTuber oh, who yeah. was there for everybody. Uh, anyway, now he's a fine catcher. He is, yeah. He's at the Dunham School. Um, he's a junior. Houston's doing great. Um, so he's he's a junior over there. And then Macy, who's who's here with us today, is a sophomore at Dunham, and uh, soccer and cheerleading. And then Georgia, my baby, is a freshman at Dunham. Uh, same thing, soccer and cheerleading. So um, you know that tuition bill is pretty healthy. So I better I better sell some roofs if you know what I mean. Well, I'll tell you, they better yeah. get better and get scholarships. Or they better get some scholarships, or they owe me a lot of money. Well, That's the good right. thing is you got your brother and your mom there when you're not there to watch them, because Wes, of course, the head coach. Right. Your mom's the, uh, the principal. Assistant principal. Yeah, in middle school. Yeah. Well, Listen. it would be good if they gave me a tuition break. I'd be excited about that, but I really could care less <laughs> no. who the baseball coach is or the principal. That. You can't. No, they won't give you that. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, well, Ryan, but, Ryan, tell us one of your favorite stories from LSU maybe about Skip yeah there's a lot about Skip um you know going back and, and I'm going to get to one in particular but there's a few things I do want to mention he talks about that game at Woodlawn when he came to watch us play and I remember that um coach was in full uniform couldn't miss him uh the best recruiting tactic I've ever seen in my life to walk up into a, a high school game with your LSU uniform on but it, it goes back before that, and I don't even know if he remembers this, but he was at a game, Keno, I think you were there too, at Episcopal. This was a few years before that. 
scouting the Louisiana All-Star baseball team. So this was like yeah. the first uh, yeah. travel baseball team. Wade Semino was yeah. the head coach. Yeah, we were yes. there. And um, I was 12 playing on the field behind there, the Little League field. Yeah, the, the, the middle school That's field. That's right. And that was the first time I saw Wasn't you two guys. was that the guys. Squires League too? That was the Squires League, yep. And, you know, it just – it's a testament to how those programs were built. In other words, y'all were at Little League baseball games. That's probably unheard of today. You know, um, looking at showcase. kids. Yeah, they sit and there it wasn't the a showcase. And watch the players. That's right. And it wasn't a showcase. So that, that's one, one memory that I, my first memory, you know, um, which predates the picture when I was five, when I sat on your knee and, at <laughs> the right. camp, you know. That's right. Um, but, but one other little interesting fact, my first batting practice at LSU, I had on his Rolex. I was admiring his watch before the game started, and he was like, well, why don't you wear it? I said, right now? He said, yeah, wear it during batting practice. So I wore his Rolex during batting practice. I remember that. Um, wow. And then I almost killed him, which is a true story. Yeah, well, actually, that's a great uh, – it's a good story. We, uh, we were in Georgia mm -hmm. playing, uh, you know, a real good Georgia team. And uh, Rhinos – at third base. I was a freshman, though. you got to cut me some right. slack. He, he was a freshman. You were a freshman playing second base, yeah. running at third base. Right. Well, that's true. That's true. Freshman year, you played second. Dalton mm -hmm. was shortstop. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. He, you know, he started as a freshman, hitting ninth, and pretty soon he was hitting first. I mean, he did well even as a freshman. And uh, But in this game, who hit the ball? Trey McClure. So Trey McClure hits a, you know, bomb. But when he hit him at Georgia into center field, boy, the wind just sh slows them up, mm -hmm. and they just fall to the ground. But at the time they're hit, you think, my God, this one can't miss. And he hit one of those that can't miss, but the wind caught it and then hit in the top of the wall and didn't go out. Okay, and of course, Ryan was going to tag up. <laughs> Right. No, tell, him, just, right, or tell him how. Well, you know, he hit it. It's it's really, it's really a, the, the story was wrong. The ball must have hit a tree or something. <laughs> it was over the damn fence. <laughs> so I was, after it was hit, it went over the fence. I'm walking back to the dugout. I'm high-fiving everybody <laughs> and wondering why the coaches are just looking at me stupid and the guy caught the ball. I don't know how it happened, but that's not that's, – it, it, so – Trey McClure, I was the bat boy for his Little League team. He was like my oh, idol, yeah, like my big sure. brother, you know. And so it made it worse that it was him. Years, yeah. So we get on the plane that night. We ended up losing the game, and I was out, double play at third base. But you had made some other mistakes during the weekend. That were ah, freshmen, debatable. That's debatable. Freshman stuff. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Not. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> so I'm playing cards in the back with Jamin Garrido and Victor Brumfield, and um, I hear – Coach Cano come running back. Holy crap, you finally did it. Terrio, you killed him. <laughs> and so he's screaming at the top of his lungs, running down, yelling at me like I did something. And I didn't know what he was talking about. I'm just trying to play cards. And he's – and some other choice words were said at that point. And he runs back up to the front. So Garadell thought it was the funniest thing in the world. Um, and he took another swig, you know, of his Coke, and that was it. And – Five minutes later, here comes Kano again. You did it again. He, he's dead. He's going to die. And so you can say what Skip told you when he came. So he was passing out. Well, right? I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the front of the goat section. Right. You know, and then Skip, of course, he's in first class with Sandy. Of course. And, I, hey, that's my job. My yeah. job was to get him there. You know? Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> anyway, he and Sandy, and I look, and Sandy's got this look on her face like she's scared to death. And Skip's got his head back. And his back of his head is gray. Mm. And Sandy's got to, oh, my God. And at that time, you guys playing cards, you're over the PA system. Is there a doctor on the plane? We need a doctor in the first class area. <laughs> and Skip was like having a heart attack. It's over. Almost. Yeah. Almost. But it was bad. And so I, uh, Sandy, she goes, Dad, come here. So I walk up to Skip. And I said, Skip, what's going on? He goes, Terry He's trying to kill me. He's trying to kill me. <laughs> he was a good they, that Terry is the kind of kid that you could have fun with. You did and, tell me I was the absolute worst infielder you had ever coached no, in no, your life no. one time. What yes, I you said did. To you oh, was, this skip would never tell you that. In no, front of the whole team. Old what skip, I said Mark, to you was skip. he was so confident. <laughs> you know, by the time he was a junior, he was so confident that he played second base, shortstop when he took a throw. 
you know, like a big leaguer. You know, I mean, they had to do yeah. everything. They crushed the bag like a big leaguer. <laughs> and, and I said to him, you know, you, you, you're going to cost us a ball game with all of those things. And, of course, he did drop a few balls and yeah. he did a few things. But, of course, over the long run, I mean, he's a great infielder. But you look natural. good doing it. Well, yeah. That was the key. Remember now, they drafted uh, uh, Ryan and they kept him at shortstop. You know, you never, mm-hmm. I'll never forget that. In other words, that's a big thing. Remember, Russ Johnson, as good as he was, they wouldn't let him play short. Third base? Yeah, made him play third yeah. and second. When in reality, he probably could have played short. Yeah. But you, you, they stayed with you. And I thought that was a wonderful, you know, wonderful commitment by the Cubs. Tell me about, uh, I, we know a lot about uh, the Cubs. Tell me about playing for Dusty Baker yeah. since he's in the World Series now and he's not won yet. You know, Dusty's the, the guy that called me up. So he was my first manager in the major leagues and, um, you know, had a still to this day have a great relationship with Dusty. Matter of fact, we were texting right, right before the uh, – the uh, championship series and just wishing him luck and all that stuff. Uh, a true players coach, you know, in every sense of the word, cares about your family, cares about your well-being, and, you know, asks all the right questions. It's never, you know, um, anything about him and, and, and deflects any compliments. And, you know, for a coach like Dusty has been doing it for so long at yeah. such a high level to stay involved with all of his former players mm-hmm. like that, like – you know, I'll just get a random text out of the blue. I wasn't an all-star or somebody that, you know, I mean, this is a guy that managed Barry Bonds and going back to all those great giant teams. And so he, he always would make you feel like you were important, which I thought was special. And so, um, you know, I'll forever be a fan. Obviously, he gave me an opportunity to play. You know, he wrote my name in that lineup card. You know, he didn't have to mm-hmm. do that. There were other options. But, but he wrote my name in there. And, and if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have had an opportunity to keep playing. Ryan, I'd like you to tell the story. A lot of folks find this interesting of how you found out you got that phone call or yeah. the meeting of, hey, you're going to the show. Give us that story. So I had been told, you know, prior to, I was having a really good season in Double A, um, and and I'd been told that I was not going to get called up to the major leagues or Triple A. Now I was hitting. I think I hit 304 that year in Double A and, and played really good defense. And um, and so our team, Bobby Dickerson, who's the bench coach. For the Phillies right now was our manager and Bobby and I have a great relationship also but um, Bobby had told me you know we're, we're just going to finish out the year let's win a championship so we got on our bus we're going to go play in the playoffs the season had ended I gave my money to get my poker chips and we're it's a 14 hour bus ride from Jackson Tennessee to Jacksonville Florida it was about seven in the morning we we're getting ready to take off and I see Bobby get up on the bus and he's walking up, and Von Joshua, who was our hitting coach, is right there. And Bobby normally has something real smart-ass to say, you know, when he gets on the bus. But he didn't say anything. He whispered something to Vaughn. So everybody's going, oh, he's getting called. Somebody's getting called up. You know, we know what? It wasn't going to be me. And Vaughn kind of turned around and looked. And sure enough, um, Bobby stood up and said, hey, you know, I want to congratulate Ryan. Pack your stuff. You're going to the big leagues. But it was really out of the blue. My son had been born a month prior to that. Um, so it was kind of a whirlwind of emotions. And then, uh, you know, the minor leagues, is, it's such a hard road, especially being married and, and with children and all that. But um, I was actually out of money. I mean, I was broke. I had no, you know, we, we didn't. So I couldn't pay poker. <laughs> I couldn't pay the cab. I, I, true story. Yeah. I had to go borrow money from our clubby to pay the cab when I got to San Diego because, it, you know, it just it drains you. So it couldn't have happened at a better time. And, uh, boy, it was awesome. Great, great ride. All right, we're going to take a break, come back. we got more Ryan Terrio, uh, maybe another skip story, maybe some more Major League Baseball talk, all of that and more. Don't forget, this segment of Dugout Talk was brought to you by Hudco Roofing and Exteriors. Ryan's got the shirt. you got to flip the hat around yeah, so, you, so they can see the hat real quick. And we got a Hudco hat right over there next to Skip's book as well. We'll continue right after this pause. You are watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Arrested for DUI or other traffic violations? Have you made a mistake? We all have. You're not a bad person. Call the law offices of O.C. Brown at 225-343-1111 or connect with us online at ocbrown.com. Mom, what's for breakfast? Don't have to.
and Lake After Hours. Men long for a simpler time when they could sit back and relax in a leather chair with a hot steamy towel for a clean cut and straight razor shave. At Rooster's Men's Grooming Center, you can enjoy the comforts of that old school barber shop with a modern twist. Our stylists and barbers are skilled in classic and current styling techniques to give you the look you want. Rooster's, the grooming destination for guests of all ages. Two locations to serve you, Highland Park Marketplace and Town Center. Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic has been covering LSU baseball for decades. Their physicians have provided care for players of all ages and skill levels. At Brock, they can treat any kind of injury to the shoulder, knee, wrist, or elbow. Brock is also convenient with six locations in the capital area. Their after-hours clinic is open seven days a week for any type of orthopedic injury that happens at night or on the weekends. Skip and I have been with Brock for all of our orthopedic needs, and you should too. Go to www.brortho.com. For all of your insurance solutions, contact the Allegiance Group in Baton Rouge. Health, life, home, auto, property and casualty, and Medicare. They can enroll you in Medicare or review your Medicare plan. The office is located on Jefferson Highway across from the Bocage entrance. Locally owned and operated, great customer service. Connect on Facebook and Instagram, the Allegiance Group Insurance Solutions, or call 225-620-6990, the Allegiance Group Insurance Solutions. Bayou Apparel has been helping local businesses communicate their message since 2009. As one of only a few local LSU official licensees, Bayou Apparel offers the highest quality products to showcase your brand. Whether you have an established brand or not, Bayou Apparel design experts can help you create an eye-catching design that fits your company's message. We do logos, event t-shirts, and promotional items for your business. Call 225-928-9090 or go to our website at www.bayouapparel.com. As owner and operator of China Hammond, Chance Kitchen has spent 20 plus years in the restaurant business and has taken inspiration from a multitude of sources and put them into what he considers to be the ideal establishment. As a Hammond native, Chance still has a strong attachment to the community in which he was raised. Chena's goal is to use local ingredients and delicious recipes to create an exceptional dining experience while also providing a fresh and inclusive atmosphere that can be enjoyed by everyone. Salute! For a reservation, call 985-622-3222 or go to the website at www.cnahammond.com. We continue with Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano, having some fun with our guest Ryan Terrio and World Series is going on, Phillies and Astros, and he's a guy that's been there, done that. Dan, I know you got some questions for Ryan. Ryan, off the air here. You played in a lot of World Series, and of course, uh, Skip, on the show, we talked about pro teams that win a lot of games, mm -hmm. but they're not a tournament team. Tell us what it was like playing at LSU and how that kind of helped you when you got in the real, the big World Series playing tournament type baseball, which is different than regular season baseball. Well, I think from day one at LSU, we would, we would say a prayer after every practice and after every game. And there was, there was things that were mentioned in that prayer that were consistent from the day I stepped on campus to the day I left. You know, you, uh, honoring your mother and your father, telling them you love them, uh, you know, and, and, and giving thanks to, to the man above and, and then giving us the opportunity to play in Omaha. Omaha was mentioned every day. Everywhere I looked at Alec Box Stadium, it was Omaha, Omaha, Omaha. The guys before me had been there. Our focus was always on Omaha. Certain major league teams, organizations, don't look at it that way. In other words, when I stepped into the clubhouse in St. Louis, and I always would envy Tony La Russa and the Cardinals from afar because we were in the Central, and they used to kick our ass all the time. But... <laughs> I would envy them, but, but it was evident why they won. Because from day one in spring training, all they talked about was winning the World Series. Like, it was expected. The playoffs were expected. Now, who's going to be pitching game seven to win the World Series? Mm -hmm. San Francisco, same thing. It wasn't, are you going to make it? It was, who's going to be the guy to win it? It was very eerily similar 
to LSU. You know, those 07 and 08 in Chicago, we had the number one offense in baseball, the number one pitching staff in baseball, and the number one defense in baseball and got bounced in the first round of the playoffs. We had Kerry Wood and Mark Pryor and Greg Maddox and Carlos Zambrano and all these guys pitching that were just Ryan Dempster on the back end. I mean, Alfonso Soriano, and the list goes on and on of hitters, but we couldn't win in October. You know, and so because the focus wasn't it was the curse. on winning it. Well, the focus just wasn't on winning in October. The focus was on how much money you get paid every two weeks. And, well, yeah. you know, but it was different on some of those other teams. Talking about, but you mentioned the preparation for a postseason game versus, you know, that game on June the 15th. Yeah. Yeah. I you mean, said it's really different. It is. And, you know, I think you get the question a lot. And, and Skip mentioned it a second ago. Like Justin Verlander is like really good. I mean, if you guys watched him the other night, he's 39 years old or whatever he is, and he's throwing 96, 97 with two or three great breaking balls. And Cy Young winner this year, probably. Clayton Kershaw, same thing, you know, um, just really, but they cannot win in October. And and the flip side of that, Madison Bumgardner, mm-hmm. who wins for, a lot. Yeah, and his stuff's good, you know, um, but in October they 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 crank it up. And what, what happens is in June, the June 15th game, we go sit in our hitters meeting around that table and guys really aren't paying attention. And it's like, you know, the teacher on Charlie Brown, wah, wah, wah. You know, you're not really, okay, what's he got? Fastball. No focus. No yeah, focus. fastball 96, 98, good breaking ball. Da, da, da. Okay, next. All right. He's got a fastball 94, 90, and nobody's listening. But those meetings in October, Jack, I mean, you are locked in. Everybody's taking notes. The video guys, I've gotten all these little different tells. And, and so the preparation is so much more intense. Baseball, the game, would be so much better if there wasn't 162. Yeah. Because as a player, as a human, to focus that much and give your best, is, it's impossible. What we're seeing now, it's why I love watching in October, is those guys are so prepared, especially the hitters, because they're at a major disadvantage. I- Pitchers every pitch, they're worried. I mean, the guy's hitting 192. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. He's a big leaguer. He can he can burn you. And every single pitch they're working. That's why they can only throw, you know, 89 or 99 pitches. Every mm-hmm. one of them, oomph. You know, hard, energy-type pitch. The guys like, uh, I don't know if you guys remember the series. In, in, um, when 2011, it was Chris Carpenter who basically threw every game for us yeah. with the Cardinals. And then 2012 was, you know, wonderful pitcher, Barry Zito. Um, it was the end of his career. He was topping out at 86. Right, that big breaking ball. And you'd have thought he was Cy, Cy Young <laughs> in October. <laughs> Had a I mean, great, great year. He, won, he, he was our MVP. I mean, he really was. He, 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 yeah. and, and he, but, he, but the preparation was different, man. I mean, it was just it's a yeah. different game. It, it, I tell you, it's very, very different. Now, even you, uh, uh, Ryan, didn't have as much of the technology that they're using now in numbers. For instance, Valdez was pitching for uh, Houston in a beautiful ball game again. Okay, and of course, he's the number one guy having the most uh, uh, successful starts in Major League Baseball, he went he went in through the sixth inning 20, 26 times. Oh, wow. You know, he got to the sixth inning. All right, that's, that's unusual. Now, of course, he did have this unbelievable curveball. And they took him at age 21, where they take other kids at 15, 16, but he just wasn't good enough. And then one day they measured the spin rate of his curveball. And, ooh, we got to take that kid. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, that turned out to be a big yeah. thing. So there are a lot of uh, hmm, uh, technological things that are pretty good, although we didn't use many. Uh, when you were playing for me, we didn't have many, of course. That was a long time ago. Um, but now everybody has something. They take it out of their hat. They got the player playing in a certain way, got being pitched with certain counts, mm-hmm. you know, and – I think it's wonderful, and I think when you watch baseball and these guys hit one, where do they look first? After they look at the ball and make sure it's gone, they turn into the dugout 
you know, and say something. They're very, very close with 162 games oh, yeah. as teammates. Unbelievably tight. Yep. Okay? Especially when you've been there a few years with the same, you know, the same people. And uh, I think that baseball has a much better than basketball or football uh, for teamsmanship. And a lot of the technology, too, it can be paralysis by analysis, you know. Mm. And my point to a lot of these hitters, and even it's big leaguers that, that we watch now that I talk to quite a bit, but if you and I were in a fist fight, are you going to think about how you're going to execute that punch? Hmm. You're not. You, you, you know, just the, move. You're either trying to knock the guy out or you're trying to get your ass not knocked out, one of the two. Yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> when you see some of the hitters and their, their – I call it the power take, you know, when they don't swing and, the, and you know, the, their body just kind of like – they're thinking too much. And it's like you either got to go or you don't go. You know, you either knock the guy out and the bad is a fist fight. Oh I mean, it really is. It's a, That's it's a good point. And so y'all watch a game and you'll see what I'm talking about. That guy probably had too much information in his head when he freezes on the heater right down the middle. Really tough. You know. That's where, when, with Skip, when you did the uh, you know, psychological stuff, take a deep cleansing breath. Like you got to clear your brain before you step into that box. You can't be got to. you can't be working on mechanics when the guy's throwing ninety six with a slide. Hundred percent. Yep. No, let, me, it, let me ask you a question. We talked a little bit. The World Series going on right now. We talked about on this show prior how, with the amount of time that they had off before, they could set their pitching rotation. Now you get a rain out in the middle. Tell us what you think that rain out does to your your staff or how it affects. The yeah, series. I think I think the bullpen. The bullpen more than anything, and in this series, you know, Houston, the, the way that team has been set up is phenomenal. Their, their bullpen is, is really, really good, and obviously some good veteran starters and then, and then some good young guys like we watched with Valdez. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think it, it, it's advantage Philly because they can get some guys some extra rest if there ever was an advantage. Yeah, if there is. You know, I don't know that there is one, but it helps Philly probably more than it helps Houston. You know – to bang the game like that, they may have played that in a regular season, but they're not. Major League Baseball is no. not going to risk getting a pitcher hot and, and, or playing three innings and right. not finishing the game. I just think it's interesting, and I, you know nobody's really thinking about that. You know why wouldn't they have played it? Well, if they get through three or four innings, they burn a couple pitchers and they can't finish the game. It changes right. the whole it's thing. It's a whole right? different. Because game or, one, Philly went to the bully. Or Nola didn't last so long. Yep. They had to use their bully yep. and stay with it. So maybe they get a little yeah. more rest, and maybe they're better yeah. when they go out. What about the the umpires? I think uh, Dan sent me something. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, the umpires have that rectangular strike zone, right? In, well, they don't have it. I mean, the TV viewers yeah. have it, and then the ball will <clears> be <throat> outside. You know, by this much, you know, about an inch or two ball mm -hmm. and then it's unbelievable well, unless it's angel hernandez huh? i was gonna say that's your yeah. arch nemesis angel unless hernandez. it's angel hernandez well he should have been a barber <laughs> that's right <laughs> when the guy hits right here doing a strike <coughs> yep. and he's like, does that guy really have that yeah. thing there you know? well, the article yeah. i sent you pat hoberg yep. was yeah. the umpire well, and he, they rated him and of all the pitches that weren't swung at he didn't miss one. Unbelievable. That's right. an unbelievable, the perfect game for an umpire. It's unbelievable. Most of them miss five, six, seven of pitches that are like this, you know. And if they'd miss them and be consistent, I think most players would be pretty. Yeah, it's not a strike today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah or you're missing outside. Like the pitcher's outside gonna or, take a, yeah. or the hitter's going to do or something. Or he's going to give them two inches, but he gives it to everybody. That's right. But they're terrific. I mean, the officials will in all the sports. But especially in baseball, it's unbelievable how many calls are. I correct. think that guy, what was his name? Uh, the, the umpire that did the Pat perfect Hoberg. game? That scorecard should go to Cooperstown. Like, how many times has that happened? Never. You, you know, since never, since it's been, amazing. Well, it's never happened. never happened. That's amazing. Right. It really is. But, but in reality, it doesn't say that this guy's the greatest. I mean, some other guy may miss one over here. Mm hmm. But he's consistent with it when he makes a call over here. Maybe mm. that's the pitches for that guy. They weren't close. That's right. You know, well, let's I mean, go, let's go with this, game. though. When you said about in the playoffs how guys focus a lot more, 
give it to the umpires. They do too. 162 games. They get tired too. Yeah. They lose their focus during 162 yeah. game schedule. A lot of travel. You yeah. know. Yeah, of course. And uh, so that that's a credit to the umpires. Credit to the game. Yeah. And I think that's that's a good thing. I agree. Rhino, we're very excited uh, that you took time, you know, to be here with us. Uh, folks, you know, one of the greatest players to play at LSU, of course, but also big-time big leaguer with the World Series championships. He just doesn't show it. He doesn't talk about it. <laughs> but he's been incredibly successful, and he's very successful in business, and I'm very proud of him and his beautiful family. His wife, of course, was the cheerleading head, which naturally he had a, <laughs> you know, married a top cheerleader, of course, and the, she's super lady. Yeah. And uh, now the kids are beautiful, and I'm w waiting for his son, uh, who I like a lot uh, as a player. I'm waiting for him to be a senior, probably a big time recruit, probably. I, we're going to get you to tell us again about Hudco Roofing real quick, but I got a double edged question for you. All right. You getting in the batter's box, who's the pitcher you couldn't wait to get in the batter's box and face, and who is that guy that you said, hey, if they pinch it for me, I'm okay? Yeah. Um, I know I blindsided you with yeah, that. Yeah. Tim Lincecum from, from the like, Giants. Yeah, from like 07, 08, 09. Like, he had a three-year stretch where it was a video game. You couldn't hit him. You couldn't hit him. Could, nobody could. I think he won two Cy Youngs, but he should have won three. Like, it was – Yeah. It wasn't fair. Uh, he was really, really Great. good. Right. Um, and really, you know, as far as, like, God, I love facing lefties. Okay. Um, you know, any lefty that was kind of the dude that was trying to trick you with a breaking ball, I would just get up on the plate. And I guess my approach worked with those guys. And had a lot of success on them. Tell us about Hudco Roofing and Exteriors again. Yeah, um, you know it's great, great business uh, that, that I've just enjoyed enjoyed having. And uh, if you need a roof or or uh, anything's wrong with your roof, obviously give us a call. Uh, you go to HudcoRoofing.com and and uh, and check us out. All right, Ryan. Again, we appreciate your time very, very much. Enjoyed all the conversation yep. as always. Yep. Thank All you. right, that's Thank Ryan Terrio. We're going to take a break. We come back. we got Verge Osbury. That's going to be some good stuff. Ryan. Deputy AD at LSU. Verge will join us when we come back. Hey, you're watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Stay tuned. Life's about happiness and stuff. Think about it. When you're single, you own some stuff. Then you get married. That's like double the stuff. Here come the kids. Even more stuff. Tons of stuff. Then the kids move out. What do you do with all that stuff? Dependable storage has you covered. Our sliding doors are easier to use than those roll-up doors and just as secure. Dependable storage wants your stuff. And with seven locations, why go anywhere else? Check us out at dependablestorage.com. Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left, and visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart. Advanced Windshield has served the Baton Rouge area for over 20 years. They take pride in the two-technician system where we can ensure a proper seal every time. We will not compromise quality to cut costs by only having one technician in the truck. This also helps us provide quicker services than our competitors. We are dedicated to providing the highest quality work with the quickest service. Go to advancedwindshield.com or call them at 225-248-6788. That's advancedwindshield.com. Doyle Electric has been impacting our community for over four decades. Established in 1978, our work helps to build a better quality of life for ourselves, our family, and friends in our community. Our success is built on core values of excellence, teamwork, integrity, and meritocracy. Committed to excellence, we'd love to hear about your upcoming project and figure out how Doyle Electric can help. Call us at 225-752-5112 or go to our website at www.doraelectricinc.com.
At Baker Grove Coast Industrial, a full-service civil and deep foundations contractor, every day is a chance to play for the winning team. We're looking for first-string players to help us build the future of the region. Success on our field is defined by grit, tenacity, and the will to get the job done right the first time. You'll gain the advantage with steady work, excellent pay, and plenty of opportunities to advance. Apply today to join our team at BakerGCI.com. That's B-A-K-E-R-G-C-I.com. to advance. Apply today to join our team at BakerGCI.com. That's B-A-K-E-R-G-C-I.com. Hold the rope with Skip and Cano here on this Tuesday night. Appreciate everybody chiming in. Cody, appreciate all those comments. Carl, you're watching Hold the Rope on YouTube or Facebook Live. Don't forget, spread the word. Watch this at your convenience. Right now, we're, it's our pleasure to have Verge Osbury, de- deputy, Executive Deputy AD at LSU with lots of responsibilities. Verge, thanks for coming by. Great to be here tonight. Get that mic a little close to you. There you Great go. Great to be here tonight with good friends. I want to say, Verge, uh, uh, we started, uh, you were, well, first of all, Verge was a great, an excellent player, uh, you know, at LSU. And then, of course, he came through the system. He's working at the Tiger Athletic Foundation. Mm-hmm. And when I was the AD, I said, I need that guy. And we hired him. And I must say that uh, from the time I hired him, he was put him in charge of football, rec- football scheduling, Right. And yes. he's been doing that ever since. Yeah. That is one bear of a job. <laughs> and he's done it very, very well. Remember, some of those are done seven years in advance, five years in advance. It's very, very difficult. And all of a sudden, somebody drops out. <laughs> you know, you really got to go. And the next thing you know, you're scheduling uh, some in state school and you hope that they come. And, uh, it's amazing. And anyway, you did a great job. I'm proud of you, Verge. Uh, how do you, how are you liking LSU's football and athletic department at this time as opposed to 20 years ago when we were doing it? You know, Coach, you put a great team together. You, you talk about that when you hired me. You had Dan Radakovich, yeah, who's in Miami now, and Herb Vinson, Eddie Nunez, Chris Howard. Uh, mm-hmm. Judas Southern, Mark Ewan, you put right, a great – They're all a, somewhere else. Yeah, you put an all-star <laughs> team together. <laughs> but, uh, you know, what, what, what we did back then is where the athletic department is today. Uh, it's created that foundation for us in all yeah. of our sports. And uh, I think, you know, you look at LSU, when you're out there hiring coaches, it's a very attractive job to, to a lot of people. You know, you pull a guy like a Brian Kelly. You get a guy, yeah. you know, get a guy like Jay Johnson from Arizona come here for – you get a, a mat from uh, making from for basketball, and you know you get Kim Mulkey, who's a legend at Baylor, who won three national championships, one of the best coaches in the business. Sure. And you get her for women's basketball. You look at all the rest of the coaches. We've hired seven coaches this year, all great, good coaches <laughs> this year. But I built on that foundation we started in two thousand. Right. The, the people have to understand. Uh, you you spend a lot of money. I mean, it's very expensive. I guess the budgets, which is. Public information, I keep telling everybody, it's about $160 million. $160 million. Yeah, yeah TAF is Something, about you know, about mm-hmm. that. But no student fees. And there are no student fees, and there are no tax dollars, dollars from the state. Now, I mean zero. Now, you can't say that about Florida. You can't say that about Alabama or any of these great schools because they take a lot of state money. Student fees. See, 
and they take a lot of, you know, Title IX money. We don't take anything. Not only that, but at the end of the year, the athletic department usually gives some money back to the university. So we're the number one award-winning, the athletic department. It doesn't cost you anything. Where the Saints cost you a lot of tax dollars, although they're worth it, of course. But LSU costs nothing for anybody. And uh, let me ask you something. If they do, they do walk on the field. I won't say they charge the field on the Mississippi, <laughs> but for some reason everybody let down somewhere and they started to walk. And one person, next person. So before you know it, the field was half filled. Now that did cost you two hundred and fifty thousand dollars because that's the rule in football and basketball. If you go down there, okay. Um, they didn't go for the goalpost, right? That didn't no, happen. No, they just, no, they the just wanted to be in the field. Mm-hmm. And uh, But it's still something that you have to guard against for your maintenance crew. You know, people have to guard against that and all the police that you have there. And uh, on the other hand, I'm very, very impressed. I told people with uh, Brian Kelly and the football team, mm-hmm. give us some information about Brian Kelly and the LSU football team going into this Alabama game. The coach is all business like he used to be uh, as a coach and the great coaches. You know, we talk about good football coaches and good mm-hmm. coaches, period. You, know, you talk about you, what you did to build a program. You talk about Coach Saban. You talk about Coach K. You talk about Kim Mulkey, people who know how to build yes. a program. And that's what he knows how to do. He knows, he knows yeah. how to build a program. You know, he makes our job easy because bottom line a guy been coaching 31 years and winning for 31 years and built programs he makes our jobs really easy well and having so. a conversation with coach kelly it's like this is what i want this is how we need to do this is how we need to get there and he's open to new ideas and how to do things and how to change and change as the game goes on so that's what's so good about him i know i don't know if you know tonight the first college football ranking came out we're number 10 in the country uh right that, that that's that's big and it's gonna be a big game this weekend alabama's number six and uh Two great programs. But I think, you know, we have one of the, probably the best coaches in America. Uh, yes. He's proven. His track record is proven. What he's done is proven. So, very happy to have him here. Yeah. Well, Burge, he, uh, one of the things that shows what a great coach he is, besides the fact that he's been steady and he's building a system, a program, you know, process, whatever you want to call it, what Skip did, Saban did, the great coaches do. But uh, he had to put together a team in a hurry. And uh, lost a lot of people. We had a lot of people, as we know, at the bowl game. Tell us about what you think about how the team came together and how they grew as the season went on. We talked a lot in this show about he didn't even have spring practice with the team that's playing. Mm-hmm. So it was a very tough coaching situation, short period of time. You know, it's a lot of psych- psyching now about getting the team ready. It's right here in the brain. Of course, talks about it all the time is mental, mentally how you get a team prepared to play mentally on the, on the field. You know, you really have three different groups now. You have the guys that you inherit on your team already, which are pretty good football players. Then you have the guys in the portal. NIL. Let's say that's your free agents that you're bringing in. And then you have the freshmen who are your rookies. And now it's, it's very difficult being a coach. One thing Deion Sanders said, you know, now you turn to an NFL locker room kind of, you know, a pro <laughs> locker room. And now how you merge all these personalities together. <laughs> but you have the guys that's there already. You got the guys coming in. They're thinking, well, this guy, how much NIL money he's getting, yeah, what yeah. he's getting. And you got the freshmen coming in. So all these, and now you get to merge all of this together, all these different personalities, all these egos and put it together and say, okay, we're a team. I think you saw that from the first game, how we struggled, uh, communication, time, and things of that nature. And we're getting better and better every week. And that, that's what coach does, uh, good coaching does, to help bring the team together to get everybody to buy in. It looks like that's what happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, going a- this week, uh, we are uh, privy to have a uh, – this is his fourth year, the quarterback – Mm-hmm. who looks very experienced, but played magnificently against Florida and unbelievably well against uh, nice. Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that he's a uh, first-round draft pick. I'm mm-hmm. not saying that. I'm just saying that he can play so magnificently. You know, I think I think he's improving week to week, and that's what you want to see in a quarterback. You know, he, he doesn't – you know, he does some things everybody talks about, you know, his throwing, you know, the passes, the passes open – I think he's getting adjusted to that because in the SEC, it's a little different from other conferences. In the Pac-12, you know, the receiver is wide open. In the SEC, that DB is right on you. 
he just has the confidence to know, throw the ball. Okay, how close that DB is, you make the play. Now, one good thing I like about him, he doesn't turn the ball over. And coach, you don't turn the ball over, you win games. You turn the ball over, you lose games. And, you know, we've, we talk about great quarterbacks. You know, great quarterbacks don't lose games for you. No. Na- uh, national championship quarterbacks have been, you know, Matt Flynn, Matt Mark, who will both be here this weekend, and Joe Burrow, who nobody really knew what he was. Sure. And he got better every week. And that's what you want to see with a quarterback. Uh-huh. Every week he's getting better and better in the system. You watch Tennessee's quarterback. You know, the first game of the year, he was okay. You know, he's an older guy, mature guy, but he just gets better. Georgia quarterback is another older guy. They just right. get better and right. they control, they manage the game. If you manage the game and don't turn the ball over, you win games. You turn the right. ball over, you're going to lose games. The other thing I saw, we've talked about this, the defense in the second half, we make very good halftime adjustments. What do you think about the you, know, you being a defensive guy? What do you think about the, the well, coaching staff and what they've done with that? Well, Matt House is one of the best. I mean, you're right about that. In the first half, we'd be off a little bit. You know, people make plays against Figure us. Figure out what's going he on. He knows how to adjust that half, and that's coaching. That's coaching. And adjust in doing the game. A lot of coaches can't coach and adjust during the game. They have to take them, you know, a whole game to put their system in and change things up. But we make adjustments during the game that change our whole defensive philosophy. Yeah, it looks, it looks real good. It's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. All right. We're going to take a break, come back. We want to talk about big contracts, buyouts for these coaches. <laughs> I mean, Auburn made a change, uh, both with their athletic director and their football coach. You have a son at Auburn, if I'm mm-hmm. correct. So we'll talk about that and, and the impact of all of that through your eyes in the athletic department at LSU. You're watching Skip and Can Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. This segment brought to you by Blumberg and Associates, the business of sports. We got plenty more to come. Stay with us. Kickoff, a celebration begins. A celebration of fellowship, food, and fun. Whether you're tailgating as a family or as friends, each unique gathering is rooted in one main idea, community. From our tailgate to yours, enjoy this football season. Sammy's famous cheese sticks are the bomb. Sammy's better than ever. La Carreta is the place for after work fun, but that's just the beginning of why we've been in South Louisiana for over two decades. Follow your nose to the best Mexican grill and experience fresh ingredients, fun indoor and outdoor dining, and fast and friendly service. Like our Facebook page for event news and live music announcements. Visit CarretaRestaurant.com to find daily specials for your local La Carreta. Fresh, fun, and festive, it's where the fiesta begins. Everybody's got a guy, and I got a guy. That's right. They can handle monthly maintenance around your business or home with their professional team members. Ask us how to get set up and what plans we offer. I got a guy. One call for most trades. Not sure who to call? Reach out to us. Our skills are broad across many, many trades. Hourly rates are available. If you want one of our team members for a couple of hours, we can get that done. We can execute everything from house calls to running errands. I got a guy. Call 985-662-0025 or send an email to info at igotaguyservice.com. Are you a business owner? Could you use up to 26000 back per employee? Employee Retention Credit Program allows business owners to request a credit on payroll wages that they paid in 2020 and 2021. Go Tax Resolution, a division of Garrity & Associates, has been helping clients apply for funds for over a year. With former IRS agents reviewing the documents and building an audit trail, you are sure to maximize the credit opportunities. Best yet is this company will evaluate your entire account at no charge, and when they have qualified you and done all the work, we'll give you a total on a fee basis. Call GoTax Resolution today and see if you qualify. Call 
I'm Tommy Chrysan of Talking Sports with TK, and I invite you to check out my podcast, available on all major platforms. Wherever you get your podcast, search for Talking Sports with TK. We'll certainly talk a lot of LSU sports, sports across the state from Louisiana, national topics, Major League Baseball, you name it, Talking Sports with TK. We've been around for quite a while. Again, available wherever you get your podcast, search for it, Talking Sports with TK. I'm Tommy Chrysan. Hopefully, you'll enjoy my podcast very very soon. We continue with Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. We appreciate everybody tuning in when you can this week. And don't forget to tell everybody to subscribe to YouTube. Follow us all on all the social media platforms. And don't forget the Blumberg and Associates, Business of Sports and Blumberg and Associates, uh, bringing you these couple of segments. So we don't want to forget those good guys over there. Dan, you got some more questions for Verge? Why is that happening now with the changing in the world of college football? Well, there's six uh, Power Five jobs open right now, currently, as of yesterday. Uh, it's a hard business. And like in our business, Coach knows this here, you never want to fire a coach. That's hard. That's a hard decision. That's a hard thing. You know, all the, all the families are close. We're close to them. You're connected to them. You know, you, you, you find a guy, and it's, it's not fun. Uh, today, you have to do it because of the recruiting type so fast, the early signing period, uh, NIL, transfers, holding the program together. So that's what's made this speed up. Uh, since, you know, back in the day, they had one signing day in February, so you could wait a while. But right now, you can't wait. Especially, you know you're going to do it and go in that direction anyway. It's better to pull the trigger uh, when you do that. Now, I tell people it's very expensive. Even at LSU, is over $20 million, you know, paying one staff off, and then you got to go get another staff by another $30 million. So it's a $50 million swing. You look at some of these buys some of these other schools right now, you know, people talk about well, with Texas and then where they make a move and won't make a move. You know, that's that's eighty five million dollars. That's that's a I mean That's to get out of it. That's to get out of it, yeah. Not including the new staff to bring in. So you gotta be very careful. Hey, it's like I say, it's, it's marriage, it's who you pick, you know. It's, it's hard. It's hard. Everybody thinks it's easy to hire coaches. You know, coach and I, we went through this to hire a football coach. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough, it's hard work. You're just not Everybody just don't want to run to your institution. They go, oh, we got 10 coaches that are going to pick your, take your pick. And that's not going to happen. It's very hard. It's very difficult. <laughs> People think this is easy. People think every coach will want to come to their place. Yeah. And that's not true. And when you fire yeah. a coach, the next coach coming in, a little trepidation depending on how well the guy did. You know, it's not all about the money. It's like, can I go there? Can I stay for five, ten years? And you got to be very yeah. confident. You got to be very confident. You know, you look at a place, and a lot of times, people don't realize this here, a lot of coaches – it's different at different places. Look at Georgia. They hired a coordinator, and Kirby's done well. You look at Ohio State. Uh, Ryan Day was already there on the staff, a coordinator. They brought him in. You know, Oklahoma, Stoop stepped down. Lincoln Riley steps in and do well. So you just don't know how these guys will turn out. Some guys turn out okay. Sometimes you hire a coordinator, it doesn't turn out okay. So it's just the luck and the programs and what people are and the support they have around them. You know, one thing that Coach uh, taught us that, you know, you're there to support the coaches and help the coaches. Mm -hmm not to get in the way, not to be trying to make decisions and things like that. And I just left football practice tonight, and the guy said, Vince, you don't see you around here a lot. I said, you know what? You're coaching. You do your jobs. What, I, what I'm going to do? You know, I'm not trying to make no plays anymore. I'm not trying to play football anymore. I ain't going to tell you what to do. I mean, that's why we pay you the salaries we pay you to make the decisions to win the games. And you support the coach. You help the coaches, all your coaches, win. And that's your job. That's it. Mm -hmm. Well, you got a son at Auburn. Mm -hmm. And, of course, now the coach leaving – Tell us what it feels like as a player. And you went through some coaching mm -hmm. change when you played. What's it like as a player when you're with a coach and now all of a sudden he leaves and, the, and then the kind of wondering who's coming in and how's it going to feel? You, you know, back in the day it used to be a little scary. It was we didn't have the information then. You know, we didn't know what it was. We didn't know it was a business. You know, both of my boys, they pretty much been raised in the business. And they've seen coaches go and come. And they understand now professional sports, especially playing on that level, it happens. It's part of the business. And you have to be, you go to a school, you pick a school or pick a place, you know, in college you do this here, where you want to be. 
and they enjoy where they are. And they knew they saw it coming. It wasn't no secret. Everybody knew it was going to happen. And he enjoys where he's at, and uh, he's calm about it. He knew it was going to happen. Hey, he loved Coach Harson. Coach Harson was good with him. But, hey, change happens in this business. And, and my kids were used to that and accustomed to that because they grew up in the business. It wasn't like, okay, daddy, I lost my coach. I'm freaking out. No, no, no. Hey, you know what? That happens in this business. It could happen again. You're playing professional sports. It might happen a lot. So that's just part of the business we live in right now. Yeah. Yeah, football coaching is tough, uh, uh, but all coaching can be tough. All coaching. Auburn uh, just got uh, John Cohn, the AD from Mississippi State, who was a player there in baseball. Baseball. And then, of course, uh, uh, coached there, mm -hmm. and then he was the AD. Uh, naturally, probably a good AD, but I'm sure Auburn in buku amount of dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, Auburn has a lot of problems. I don't know, I'm not knocking anybody here. I'm just saying that there's been some problems at Auburn that they can't get over. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Alabama's so good that it's a tough thing for them at this time. Do um, you think that John Cohn can straighten something out there? You know, I think one thing they did, they hired a good president. Uh, he came from engineering school, and our president, Bill Tate, talks highly of him. I think he got an AD now at a Power 5 school. I think now they can put it together where the president and AD is on the same page. Uh, you know, it's hard. You know, we talk about it. Everybody has to be on the same. You have to have the president, the athletic director, the coaches all got to be on the same page. If you have any dissension in any one of those groups, it won't work. So now you have, you have president. He hired his AD. Okay. Now the AD and that group will hire a football coach. Uh, the Auburn's a fabulous place. Great facilities. Oh. Great school. One of the top schools in the country. I mean, the SEC. So they have everything there to be successful. The football operations center, they just opening it up next year. It's, I mean, coach is about it's double our size. It's a 240,000 square foot building. Mm -hmm. So they have everything it is to be that successful. And you're right. You have to, you know, good thing we did. We managed. We were all on the same page. You had Mark Emmert as the president, and you had great people as presidents to help us achieve what we wanted to achieve. One thing Scott talks about, and of course, uh, Brian Kelly spoke about, so did Kim Mulkey when they got hired. Scott and President Tate. And the coaches, the, they talk the about alignment. Alignment. That's Everybody's right. aligned alignment. with the same mission, the same goals. That's right. And Scott and, oh. and Dr. Tate have a great relationship, as you do with Dr. Tate. And to have everybody in the same wavelength really means a lot for a coach. Well, Scott and I learned that from we learned that from Coach Bertman, really, because you know Coach Bertman got there. I remember I was a young administrator. You know, we all in the room, radical and all of us. We want to tell the coaches what to do. You know, they need to do this. this. <laughs> coach said, "Stop, stop." You know. We're here to help the coach. We're the Walmart employees. We park in the back. We make sure they get everything they need, the student athletes and the coaches. We make sure that they're successful. We're here to help, not to demand or manage or micromanage a program. You know, you don't do that. So now, you know, Scott is, we real relax. Hey, you hire the coaches, you do your job. You win. We're going to give you everything possible to be, support you to win and be successful. That's what we do. We help you. That's all we do. One of the first things you did, Coach, when you took over as AD, I remember, you brought in all the coaches, you talked to them about what yeah. they thought they mm -hmm. needed. Tell the folks how that process went. <laughs> well, yeah, helping coaches as administrators is what it's all about. And uh, they're here, and you got to help them, and there's 20 or 21 of them and all kinds of assistance. And you got to help these coaches. Now, What I what I, what's happening now, Verge, the coaches make so much money now, and I'm not just talking about Coach Kelly in football. I'm talking about all the coaches in any sport. They make so much money compared to the average American out there, you know, working uh, his or her uh, behind off. Uh, you don't see many as many bad coaches in any sport, Verge, as you used to 20 years ago. No, no. I mean, today, if you're going to give the guy X number of dollars, he's going to be good or she's going to be good. You know, that's, that's the pressure on coaches today, too. You know, we, we, there is so much money out there right now. Yeah. And you lost public perception. And I think that's what happened to us in the country. We lost a lot of public perception because of the coaches' salaries, what they're paid. And look, that's the market value. We just do what the market tells us, dictate to us. But at the same time, People expect you to win 13 games and you make $10 million. Absolutely. And as, as, it's unrealistic. And you're like, you know what? We're building a team. We had 39 guys on scholarship. Okay? So Coach Kelly's trying to build a team. 
yeah, that would take to get him out of Notre Dame. That would take, he's one of those guys, going to make $10 million. But at the same time, people right now, it's like, you make $10 million, you're supposed to win 13 games. And that's the, that's the perception, the mindset of most, you're right, Coach, most of America's in the median income in State of Louisiana is $42,000. Oh, well, right, right. Listen, we've, we've got to ask you, because we've asked everybody and so many people, but you probably know more about it. You said something about like a pro locker room. All right, that has something I'm sure that you were alluding to in the transfer portal and, of course, NIL. Uh, name, image, and likeness, and, of course, the ability to transfer uh, anybody, anywhere in a given year. How do you think those two things fit in with the amount of money that's being given to the coaches and the scholarships worth so much anyway? Uh, it's, it's, what do you think about it? Is it too much? No, Coach, you know, I think we saw this coming. You know, and Scott and I, we, we're pro-NIL. Okay, we knew it was coming, knew the day was coming. You knew we started paying coaches the salaries and administrators and, and, and just personnel in your office and staffs growing so big. We knew this was coming. You know, we lost that case in the U.S. Supreme Court 9-0, to the NIL case, the Austin case. And so time, it was coming. You know, you can't own a person's name, image, you know, and they like this. You couldn't own it. So when the coaches' salaries grew the way they were, like I said, it goes back to the public perception. We lost that, and we knew that train left the station. Like you always say, the toothpaste is out the tube. You ain't going to put it back in the tube. So now you got to figure out what we're going to do in the future, how this is going to look. Does NIL thing stays the way it is and these collectives stay in place, or do you go for really a pay-for-play plan? Where you freshman year you get 25, sophomore 50, 75, 100, and then, you know, if you want to go do your deal with Cano or F or anybody else, you just go do your personal private deals with them, let us know about the contracts, and that's it. I think it's hard to it's gonna be hard to keep raising money through collectors and things of that nature to keep doing these type of deals. I think that's gonna happen. I just think the, the money runs out. And then you have it competes with everything you have going on, coach. You have your Tiger Athletic Foundation, sure. the university are trying to raise money, then you raise the money for the collective, you want people to build yeah. buildings for you. So after a while, you there's only sports properties in there sports too? properties, corporate sponsorships, there's only so many dollars to go around. That's right. So you know, we're living in a fantasy world right now, this thing's gonna end. We don't know how it's gonna end. I think, you know, that's why you're seeing all the realignment. I think they're gonna be, you know, one day I think they're gonna be, we may be gone, but forty teams, like yeah. the NFL model. Because the NFL showed us that they don't really need the fans. They have that twenty-two billion dollar TV contract, right? And that's what they like lay on. So when COVID hit, those type of things, they didn't get those eighty million dollar hits like we got. So now you're seeing all this real line and all these big super conferences. That's to get the TV revenue up. That's the only place we have to grow, coach, right now to make more money. Right. I think everybody should pay attention to what uh, Verge said. Uh, years from now, maybe ten. I don't mean fifty. Ten years. There could be instead of the uh, how many power five five, five plus Notre Dame it could be just about 40 sixty teams. about sixty something yeah. uh-huh. there could be forty teams instead of sixty you know like one conference just drop out and well, save the money that you have to compete with every single year because that's what's happening. It's going up and up. You know, when you go out, the insurance goes up. The travel goes up. If it's an airplane or a bus, the hotel you stay in goes up. The salaries goes up and so on and so forth. So pretty soon somebody's going to say, eh, we can't do this anymore and drop out. As opposed to LSU, which is never going to not compete. I mean, we're we're a uh, tremendous... Uh, place, I think our logo from LSU, I think the purple and gold, I think the other things about Tiger Stadium, I think are, you know, amongst the top 10 in America. Uh, how many good football teams are there that play every year? You know, McClemson, maybe, Ohio State for sure, of course, and of course, Alabama. But after that, it's still a. Mm-hmm. A lot of parity. Yeah, a lot of lot of changes. Yeah. So we're one of the best teams uh, in the nation, as you said. We're ranked like tenth right now. Uh, is that right, Tommy? In the college football playoff rankings, which were yeah. released earlier today, LSU's number ten. Yeah, like we're pretty good. And uh, if you lost 
uh, Florida State was very unfortunate, you know, kind of an un... Well, okay, not making excuses for saying that. We could have won that game, and then we would have been up there in the top seven or six right now going into Alabama like it used to be. It used to be that two teams are going into play to play Alabama at the time after the open date. Verge, let's talk about you got Alabama coming to town. I heard Coach Kelly Monday say it's a privilege to play in a game like this, and it's why he came to LSU. It's why players come to LSU. Well, you you played in many a big game, not just against Alabama, and it's got to be a little buzz in the entire athletic department knowing what's coming up uh, Saturday evening. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it, different people have different feelings about it. Uh, I, I'm a little old school. I was trained by Bill Onsbar and you know, Coach Bergman. It's, it's another game. It's got, just you, another game on the schedule. You're going to get a win. That's right. You can't get too hyped up. Oh, wow, Alabama's coming to town. Yeah. That's what yeah, people used to do. Yeah, get hyped up for one game. No, Coach talked about it earlier with Kim Mulkey. Every game, no matter who you're playing, right. you have to come out with the same mentality. That's what Saban going to prepare his guys. He's not going to be like, oh, we're going to LSU. It's a big game. He knows, <laughs> he knows, he knows what type of game it is. The winner wins the West. They come in here, and this is what they prepare for. I think that's what Coach Keller is talking about, too. We prepare for this. This is just part of it. You know, you can't get too high. You can't get too, you know, get, get too high for a game. You got to stay steady. Yeah, I, I think Brian Kelly's done a great job. And Coach Bertman said it back in August. He's a Hall of Fame coach. He'll, he'll be in the Hall of Fame when, when it's his time to be put in there. And what he has done, he's got this team in a spot that a lot of people didn't think they would be in. August, even in September, even after a couple of wins. And I, I've told people, be patient. He he knows what he's doing. Yeah, let him do his job, right? And That's you, right. Verge, you got more experience than I certainly got with it. But thirty years in the media, but you got you know what Brian Kelly's doing. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, and he's putting it together the right way. Verge, uh, Skip, uh, thanks you for a lot of things you just said. Of course, that was very nice of you. But uh, personally, uh, you've been the greatest. You're a great employee. One of the best top people in the department, which you need. I mean, you have no idea, folks, how many things go on every day to take care of in the department. And uh, Verge is one of those guys that can take care of some serious problems at any level, at anywhere. And so very valuable guy. We appreciate, most of all, your coming here and sitting with us. Appreciate that very much. Uh, I want to say thanks. You know, I just didn't want to leave without giving you the kind of thanks you deserve. And is there anything else that you'd like to finish with uh, that we didn't ask you? That oh, you no, want yeah, to say? great questions. And go Tigers this weekend. It's a big weekend. And well, I'll weekend. throw it in. You can't say names, but one of your responsibilities is the schedule. And that's, as Coach said earlier, that's a tough job. It's a big <laughs> job. Headaches, phone calls, emails, a whole bit. You have some, some special things going on with the schedule. Not that you're going to spill the beans here, but I'm sure you're working on we things. We're working on a lot of things. You know, we lost Oklahoma because they came to the conference. So you had to re- change that. Them. So like worked, Coach said, sometimes it changes. Things happen like that, you know. The SEC stole them <laughs> from us. So uh, we lost the Texas game, as you remember, not in the conference. So we lost that. There's three games we lost. So we're replacing those games and working with people around the country and getting the right fit for us and, and what we do. Uh, you know, people talk about, you know, should we play a week zero game? You know, I don't think that has nothing to do with the Florida State game. We're right where we need to be. That's why you play those big games. So we LSU, we used to playing those type of big games. We need to play those big games. Verge, one of the things I'm going to say before we break, you followed something that Skip brought up, and we appreciate it. Playing the in-state schools, much better than playing Utah State. To this day, Southern is our biggest game. Yes. Southern University is the biggest game this year as of – I don't know how many people can be at the Alabama game, but there are more people at that Southern game than any other game, and traffic was horrible. People couldn't even get to the stadium. Uh, well, people on campus yeah, had yeah, never yeah, been yeah, on campus. Yeah, on campus, uh, people couldn't get to the stadium, and people who attended the game is still our number one game as of – Actual attendance? Actual attendance, that's right, the Southern game. So. you got to give a lot of credit to Southern for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was great to see the community come together. Come together, that's right. With, mm-hmm. with everything, from the bands to the football team, the whole bit. Burge, once again, thank you so much. Appreciate Best of luck to you and the family <laughs> and all that good stuff going forward. We're going to take a break, come back, put a wrap on it. We'll throw a few things at you in the final segment right after this pause. You're watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Stay tuned.
Life's about happiness and stuff. Think about it. When you're single, you own some stuff. Then you get married. That's like double the stuff. Here come the kids. Even more stuff. Tons of stuff. Then the kids move out. What do you do with all that stuff? Dependable storage has you covered. Our sliding doors are easier to use than those roll-up doors and just as secure. Dependable storage wants your stuff. And with seven locations, why go anywhere else? Check us out at dependablestorage.com. Men long for a simpler time when they could sit back and relax in a leather chair with a hot, steamy towel for a clean cut and straight razor shave. At Rooster's Men's Grooming Center, you can enjoy the comforts of that old school barber shop with a modern twist. Our stylists and barbers are skilled in classic and current styling techniques to give you the look you want. Rooster's, the grooming destination for guests of all ages. Two locations to serve you, Highland Park Marketplace and Town Center. If you live on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain and you have a son or daughter that plays baseball or softball, you need to know about Six Rings Baseball Camps. Held at beautiful Coquille Park Recreational Facility and run by Dan Canterbury, Six Rings will teach baseball skills, play instructional games, and have fun playing the great game of baseball. Go to our website at www.sixringsbaseball.com for more information on our upcoming Thanksgiving and Christmas baseball camps. Six Rings Baseball. Learn the game to love the game. Are you a baseball fan, LSU fan, sports fan, or success fan? Purchase your copy of Everything Matters in Baseball, the story of the building of the most successful college baseball program in history. This book details the path to the decade of excellence culminating in five national championships in 10 years at LSU. Starting from humble beginnings, Skip Burtman changed baseball to LSU, the SEC, and the entire college baseball world. Get your copy of this entertaining and inspiring story today by going to www.acadianhouse.sports.com. With over 60 years of combined experience, Kathy Sherburn and Anna Barnett bring a wealth of knowledge and excitement to the framing industry. Keeping strong to the Louisiana culture, Acadian Frame and Art has numerous local artists and sports team memorabilia for their customers to choose from. Whether you're creating a gallery-like setting in your office or simply looking for some fun art for your kids' playroom, Acadian Frame and Art is your one-stop picture framing spot. Call 225-927-6129 or go to www.acadianframe.com. We continue with Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano, YouTube, Facebook. Appreciate it. Spread the word about this program. Next week's going to be a Dynamite show. We'll tell you about that in just a minute. Right now, it's time for the Motivational Moment, brought to you by Marucci. Marucci does a great job with lots of things, including sponsoring the Motivational Moment. And I know, Coach, you want to set this thing up for everybody. I do, uh, because I want to tell a story uh, like we told you before every game, you might tell a two, three minute story. And uh, But before I give you the story, I want to be able to explain what it is. Uh, this is a big team building story. Uh, this is a leadership story. This story is told uh, to businesses everywhere. Uh, people have taken it from me. Uh, it's a very, very wonderful story story uh lloyd uh, throw up the uh i've got the guys in right field and it starts like this uh guys when geese migrate they always travel in a v shape and then the person the one goose out front okay takes on the wind and takes on all of the uh, portions of being in the front, the ones that are in the second taking on some of the wind. And then as they go further back, they become honkers. Honkers just encourage them. Honkers couldn't possibly be for human populations to encourage uh, the windbreakers. And then beautifully enough, when the windbreaker gets tired, uh, here she goes to the back of the line 
and works their way back up to the front. If one of the uh, geese should go down, I mean go to the ground, two other will go down and see how she's doing before they continue to fly. It's a wonderful team building story. And I can tell the boys that sometimes you're going to be out front in leadership position and you're going to take all the wind and you're going to take all the stuff and you're going to be rooted on by your teammates. But at other times you'll be in the back and you'll be rooting for your teammate who's up front. Well, you can do that because you represent LSU, you represent your family, and you represent your maker tonight. Let's play like champions. There you go. That's good stuff. The motivational moment brought to you by Marucci. No <laughs> question about that. Good stuff. I never heard that one before. That, that's really good. Hey, we want to put a wrap on tonight's show. We appreciate everybody out there. Uh, do remind you, Jordy Collada, Monday through Friday at 7 in the morning. You got Mikey Matuk, Mondays and Wednesdays at 6 p.m., Fridays at 430 you got uh, Where the Dog's At with uh, Rohan Davey Tuesday nights. you got Chopping It Up with Roger Kadar. Lots of good stuff here at FM Digital Media, so we want to publicize all those shows. I know Jordy Collider this morning ran the promo for this show, so we're all a team down here. Coach, you like that idea, don't you? Yes, I do. want to thank our guests tonight. Coach Ryan Terrio did a wonderful job. Terrio's great. Uh, Verge is great. You can't have, from an LSU point of view, well, you can't have uh, two more successful, more knowledgeable guests than those two. Both LSU grads and former athletes. Yeah. Dan, what you do? We got a show coming up next week. Tell us about our guests next week. Yeah, this guests, is a heck of a lineup, too. Yeah, we got a pretty good lineup. Pretty good player, <laughs> Kevin Falk. Uh, yeah, for, he's reasonable. Pretty good player at LSU, one of the great ones. Uh, and, of course, College Football Hall of Fame. And now playing for the Patriots. Got three or four rings. Three rings. Three rings with the Patriots. And then came back, did some work with the football team. Now he works with the L Club. And uh, so Kevin's going to come and talk some LSU football. we got to get some Bill Belichick and <laughs> yeah, some Tom Brady could stories. Yeah, be some great stuff. And then we got Mike Sorovka, Skip, probably the best left-hander oh, that we ever be, coached. Be, best left-hander that's ever pitched. That's saying a lot. At LSU. Big game There's pitch. been a lot of good lefties, Coach. There's been a tremendous amount of lefties. And Sorovka, remember, who did play in the big leagues and all of that. Uh, came on a 135-pound freshman from uh, <laughs> Texas and worked his way four years later, and I'm very proud of that kid. Well, the thing we talked about you know, with Terry and talked about playoff pitchers, probably one of the best playoff tournament pitchers we have. Oh, best game, one of the best games I've ever seen pitched. That's really good stuff there. So that'll all be next week. Spread the word about Hold the Rope. Follow us on all the social media platforms. Subscribe to that YouTube channel. We put stuff up every day. You got some you'll have clips from tonight's show to remind you to subscribe to YouTube. That's gonna happen every day. All the social media platforms, we want you to jump on that. All right, Dan, any closing thoughts? Oh, we're good. Can't wait for the Alabama game this weekend. Oh, that's a big one. It's a well, they're all big, but this is a good one. It tells you where the team's at. I think the fans have to be realistic. If it's a good, close game, somebody's going to win, somebody will lose. If we play well, that's all you can ask for, Coach. That's it. you got to play well as often as you can. And, of course, playing well usually means that you win the game, but not every time. And uh, that's what Coach is asking, to be better than last week. That's what Coach Kelly is asking. Well, and it was a pretty good game earlier that day, Tennessee, Georgia. There, there'll be Tennessee. a lot of college football fans have a fun yeah, you day. You want to see that one <laughs> as big, and Alabama's lost a little luster since Tennessee has uh, come on so strong. But look how long it's taken Tennessee to do that. And what I'm saying is, my God, uh, what happened to Auburn? Uh, what happens to these teams that fall into the cracks? Now, we never have done that since Nick Saban. Now, we used to do that all the time, and uh, now we never do that. We've got quite a brand. I think an interesting thing is let's see what happens with Ole Miss from this point on from our game with us and see how, they're, yeah. how they roll their way through. Yeah, it's going to be. Can they recover? Are they really there? Well, or was it just the peak and now they're – 
Yeah, yeah that's a tough right. thing. You find out who the championship contenders are in the month of November, and we're in the month of November uh, for college football and lots of other sports going on too as well, including that World Series thing, which will be over by the time we're here next week yeah. in, all, in all likelihood, and we can recap that. Hey, we appreciate everybody out there watching the comments on YouTube. We appreciate it. On behalf of Dan Canterbury and Skip Bourbon and Lloyd pushing all the buttons, I'm Tommy Christ saying you have been watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for watching the Hold the Rope show presented by Jerry Lane Chevrolet, Find New Roads, and Sammy's Grill on Highland. Join us next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Thank you, Baton Rouge, for 35 years of helping Jerry Lane support the community. With all the things that you do to help us with buying vehicles, servicing vehicles, it allows us to support over 60 different charities and companies that bring Baton Rouge to a new level. And we appreciate your support in helping us do this. Thank, Thank you, you, Baton Rouge. Yeah!